Our mayor, city council members, city administrator, and first responders. We ask for wisdom and direction in all deliberations tonight. And may all decisions be according to your will. And for all that is accomplished, we will give you the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Approval of agenda. So move, Mayor. Support. Support. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Truth, um, taxation. Madam Mayor, uh, this is an annual thing here. To be, uh, uh, we have the uh, public hearing and the approval of the budget for uh, fiscal year 2015-2016. Uh, we've all received copies of the budget. Yeah. Basically, in a nutshell, we are looking at a completely balanced budget for a general fund of $13,619,000 uh, with uh, equal uh, estimated revenue and expenditures. Again, uh, a balanced budget would not have been possible this year without our residents wisely passing the Samosa -Sam Millage to create an independent funding source for our firefighters. Again, Michigan system of municipal finance is fundamentally broken. Uh, I know that they'll probably put that on my tombstone, but I'm going to say it until I die. And if people are sick of hearing it, then write your legislators a screen bloody murder and make sure we do what we need to do to get uh, this fixed. So uh, when you look at all total items, uh, you're looking at a complete budget of all funds, uh, general fund plus the component funding units of approximately $28,976,000. So, again, the administration recommends approval. Madam Mayor, you need to open up the uh, public hearing for the city budget. I believe there was one resident that wanted to speak about the budget specifically. Open up public hearing. Okay, city budget on your right up there. State your name and your address. My name is Scott Lashley. I live at 321 West Bernard. Got a question first. Will this raise my taxes? The budget? Exactly. Uh, the budget is what funds we have to work with and how we set our goals for the for the coming year. Is anything year. in this budget going to raise my taxes? The only thing that raised your taxes was the 14 point mills that were just passed. I understand passed. that. Okay. That would be it. So nothing in this is going There's to. There's nothing new. Nothing new. Taxes. Nothing new. Now. One of my problems is, is we have maintenance on our roads. You guys want to raise that another $114,000. I have another problem is this right here. This is a photograph. And you can take a look at it. This is a sewer. Mm -hmm. It's been sitting here for over a year. I've watched vehicle after vehicle drive over the top of it. City and public. As you can see, it's caving in. What alley is this? It's Myers and Madge. East, west side? Uh, west side. Okay. OK. 
Okay, you guys want to raise up more. You guys keep on asking for more, for more maintenance on roads and stuff like that. I would Seems say, wait, what? Excuse wait. Me, sorry, sorry. The fact that we really haven't had enough money to use the roads is why you're happy to show us the picture. So why? Thank you for making that argument right. for us. Thank why? You. I need to, uh, explanation. Well, let me go down to that one. I was having a discussion with somebody about John R. And um, I was told <coughs> north of Nine Mile Road was bad. Now, according to these photos, this is bad. South of I-75, uh, I my, my, my response of driving in the south line, uh, in the right side lane, was, well, you know, it's not too bad if you drive in the left lane. Well, I'm sure the businesses in the right lane appreciate that. And here's the roads that are on John Hart. Where's, where's this road maintenance money going to? You want this, is, this is my question. Okay. I, I don't know. You want to take it? My end, no. my, end my end of the city doesn't seem to be improving as far as you guys asking me for more of my tax money. Okay. Madam Mayor? Okay. Yes, sir. What is the more of your tax this $114,000? Um, maintenance and road in your okay, but proposal. What is the more of your tax money? That's probably about the same as was in last year's. Budget. Probably I don't have last. You're year's going in from two hundred and fifty-four thousand. You're asking for now. You want to get three hundred and sixty-eight thousand more in your maintenance. But this is not going to raise your taxes any. So we're not asking you for more money for that. So. I understand you're not asking me for it, but it's still my tax dollars, correct? Right, right, right. right. It's still my tax yeah, dollars right. that are being used, correct? That's correct. Okay, so it is still my tax right. money. But you kept saying we're asking you for 114000 more, and I just... Into that, into that part of the budget, correct? Coming from other parts of the budget. Exactly. You're okay. taking from this one to put in... No, no, I understand now. Okay, thank you. Now, you guys want to start a project on Cousins starting summer of 2015. When's the project on West End going to start? We're already taking bids. We're in the process. It's, it, we all know what West End looks like. We're totally aware. I live around the corner from West End. I know what it looks like. I drive it. Okay. And well, I tell you right now, finding the money in the, and then going to pursue the money, the bond for it is another issue, which if we bond for it, causes another debt, which you have to budget for. That's, and someone, and someone, and someone has to pay for it. Yeah, and we have some bonds that we're still paying on from John R. and Nine Mile, which they start dropping off this year and next year. I think 2017, the other one drops off. Right. And that money is what we're gonna be hoping to re allocate towards some more roads because we're already making a payment on those. We can't just overextend ourselves to the point where we, we're going to put ourselves in a bind. We're not going to do that. We're going to focus on probably Cousins this year and West End. And that will be the extent of our road repair. And there's some other areas that we're going to patch and take care of. But I think that's about the extent of our budgetary uh, process at this point. I don't think we have any more room. Mayor Preece. Yes. Uh, I would also like to point out to the gentleman that this figure includes 
things like snow plowing in the winter, mm -hmm. salting of roads in the winter, and other types of year-round maintenance that is performed. So it doesn't leave a whole lot after you take all of that out to do any new projects. So we, if we are able to do Cousins and West End this year, I'm, I'm very pleased personally with, with the funds that we currently have. See, I could probably better understand your ideas of this budget had I been able to go to that clerk's office and gotten a copy of that and got to read it, okay? But I didn't. I, I went there. I was told I was the only one that seen this, but I couldn't have a copy of it. I could only read it standing there. This is the only thing that I've really got to do any kind of a research on. I wish I'd have had a copy of it so that I could sit down and look at what your budget is and what you're spending this money on and see if there was other things that you could change and maybe put money in in better areas. My end of the city is not seeing this money. And I got other proof of that. I've got do, you, do, you have, uh, do you have internet at all? At all? <laughs> yes, I do. Isn't our budget on the website? No, it's not. For you. And this budget, after it's passed today, will be put up online. It's, it's there. Uh, tomorrow there will be 10 copies of this budget after it's passed, available at the city clerk's office. Uh, the budget is a work in progress until it's passed. Does it? Right after it's passed tonight, then you can access the budget and you can see right. the budget. But does that do me any good today to sit here and discuss that budget? You know what? What is you? a budget? Huh? A budget is a plan. Right. Okay? So if you see that and you don't like that plan, then you can say, hey, maybe you should reallocate some money for this or for that. Okay. What you need to understand, though, is that there is a chronic underfunding in roads across the state of Michigan. Now, I know the people of the state of Michigan, they did not like Proposal 1. They overwhelmingly turned Yes, I understand that. Unfortunately, they didn't fix the road problem. Now, if Proposal 1 would have passed, it would have given the city of Hazel Park, okay, an additional $691,000 a year to maintain roads. Now, we try to do the best that we can with the limited amount of road money that we have, uh, but it is inadequate to repair those roads. Where, where does the one million dollars that you get for the ordinance and uh, fines that you get, where does that money allocate go to? Where does that money go to? Yes. Well, the general fund. Okay, general fund. Now, what is that money used for? Because I, I, I like Police. to Police. I, like I like to study federal. I, I deal with uh, federal and state issues. I, I, I used to dabble in watching their their stuff. And I've been kind of getting an idea how this is working. And I'm starting to come down this level now because I get to, I get to actually face you guys. Right. I don't get to face them. So now I'm going to come down to this level and I'm going to start dabbling in it this way. Okay, good. <coughs> so I kind of an idea of what general fund is. Okay. So you do have an idea what the general fund I is? I have a general okay. idea, but okay. I don't know what your... I can show you like a pie chart for all the things that it funds. If you want to call me, I can give you like an easy to read synopsis. I can show it to you right here, right now, if you want to come and look at it. It's kind of a, uh, uh, a little bit of a uh, you can just synopsis show of where they go. To it. You can just show them the yeah. general fund <laughs> expenditures. Right. So the general fund expenditures. That'll you cover. can get the whole budget tomorrow morning at the clerk's office. There you go, right there. And that's, an, it's a, that's pretty easy to that's read. That's revenues and down. expenses. Sources. Mayor Parisi? Yes. Uh, as the city manager said, the budget is a plan. It's, it's a plan that's changeable at any time during the fiscal year by simply transferring funds from one line to another to do whatever needs to be done at that time. So uh, this is the way we see things that, that uh, are likely to happen and... Uh, Nothing's in stone. Okay. Now, isn't that what this meeting is supposed to be? To generally 
suggestions from the public? Do. Absolutely. Okay, how am I supposed to make suggestions if I can't tell you what's on that? On Every meeting has a time for suggestions yes. from the audience. Okay, so in now, any meeting, you could come up and make suggestions. Okay, now, again, on the north end of the city, I was told that these new repairs that were done on Coy, Shovelin, and Battelle were probably water main breaks. Okay, well, I, I went out and I checked them out. One, well, it probably was. But this one right here, I don't know, but this green arrow right here kind of matches this green arrow right here, which is the sewer system. Yeah. It has nothing to do with the water. Well, it, it all has water and sewer all together, so. Okay, well, this is the repair on the north, on the south end. For the winter. Yeah. No. Yes. This was about until they're a able. week ago. Well, that's normal. Okay. Well, it'll be repaired. Hold on. Hold on. Now, the one that I'm talking about is right here, about the same amount of time. So, this right here and this right here are about the same amount of time. And so what you're saying now is there's a disparity in how things are repaired in the north end and the south end? Well, take a look at the condition of well, everything. I, I can take a look at pictures, but that doesn't mean well, much to me. Well, would you like to take a drive, sir? I, I, can, I do. I drive all over the city all the time. What means something to me is what happened under the ground, what were the <coughs> circumstances, why one is cement, why one is not. I, I can't okay, discern well, that I from mean, looking at pictures. I'm talking about the roads and the maintenance, correct? Well, you say nothing happens in the south end. I believe it was last year or year before last. We just paved all of Elza. Mm -hmm. Part of George. Part of George. Part of George. Which is in the, the south, south end. end. The year before. Right. Mirror I mean, was I, done this decade, too. Mirror was I mean, five years ago. I Mirror understand was where, where you're coming from. I grew up on Bernard, so uh, I've lived in the South End all my life. I know. And I'm the South End, too. So, what I'm saying is, I, I can't look from those pictures and say, you know, why one is asphalt and why one's cement. I, I don't know. Maybe one has to have more pressure. I, I, I just don't know. <coughs> well, from your perspective, you're sitting here, and I, I understand. You're trying to make me understand that. The only thing I'm trying to make you understand is we take the money we have, we spend it as wisely as we think we can, and that's all we can do. Believe me, if we had an idea that we could do more road work than we're doing, it would be done. We'd do it. But given what we have to supply to the citizens of Hazel Park, this is how it works out. Now, if you have suggestions, if you say, you know, if we don't need a recreation department. See, there's or, the problem. You know, I something. Can't, like, I can't you can do that at any meeting. I can't You can do that at any meeting. At any meeting. At any meeting. You can come yeah. here tomorrow, get the budget, study it for a month, come to next month's meeting and say, I've studied it, here are five areas where you can save some so money. you have one meeting a month? Uh, uh, just normally months. we only have one meeting a month. But this can be amended at any time, like uh, Councilman Selman was saying. This is a, a, a working document. So if somewhere down the line something happens, we can take money from here and put it there. Because, see, I would, I would love to have had that this time around so that no. I could actually make some suggestions. That I understand that. Enough. But it's not that you can't make any suggestions. You can make any suggestions at any meeting. Because I'm kind of getting tired of the roads that I'm driving on. I'm, I've got a I'm bus darn tired. tired. We are yeah. all tired. Yeah. Amen. I've got a bus. Who's not? Who in Michigan is my car right now? We don't have to uh, anybody in Michigan. I understand. Talk okay. to your legislators. Yeah. yeah. It's I have been talking to them. You know what they do with my suggestions? See the can? That's where 
where it goes. They're the funding. Same thing I think they're doing with some of our suggestions. They are our primary funders for road money. But okay. the only way to get to them is to get to you. Because you're the only ones they're going to listen to. They're not going oh, to no. listen to us. No, they no, listen. I'm they sorry. Listen to us. No, I'm sorry. No. They you don't know listen what? to us. I'm sorry. But they'll listen to you before they'll listen to me. We're all in the same boat on that, Mr. Lashley. We've been so trying to said, get them to I've listen been, to us. I've been going through Fed, and I've been going through State, and none of them listen to me. Uh, well, I understand that completely. Trust me. So I have a better chance of getting you to get your voice to listen to me and them to listen well, to them. Well, I, I appreciate your, your concern, and I hope that you come up with some suggestions. Because well, if I'm we can... get all of this budget, I'm going to go through it, and we'll see if I can help find ways to... Get Great. these things rearranged. Great. Because we need those roads down there taken care of. I hear you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Mr. You. Lashley. From Thank your you. lips to God's ears, Mr. Lashley. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else uh, to be hearing in for the public hearing? Any Just the budget. the budget. Anybody else? Having none? Close public hearing. Madam Mayor, the administration respectfully requests the approval of this budget. Again, this budget is a plan for spending. Okay, uh, that's all that it is. It's a very tight budget. We only ask for what we need with respect to uh, maintaining services with uh, some more some millage. We did roll back the original police and fire millage, now making that a police supplementary millage. We will ask our voters to renew that in August. We've kept our promise. It's renewed, so we will ask them to reduce and renew that millage. Now, East Point, they levied the full 14 mills, plus they kept their full seven mills. Okay? We're going to run lean, we're going to run mean, and we're going to try to continue to give our residents the absolute best value that we can for the buck uh, that they pay us. Our costs for police and fire services are lower per capita than our, all of our surrounding communities. I'm proud of the fact that our employees do a great job of doing more for our residents with less. There are some costs that we have absolutely no control over, that we, have, we are obligated to pay by pension costs, and those costs have increased dramatically. Health care costs are going up as well. We're monitoring that. We're looking for ways to save money and control costs. But again, our ability to do that is very limited. Mr. Lashley, where would you go? We're under this, we are under the same rules of the legislature that you are. Cities are created by the legislature. There's no mention of cities in the United States Constitution. We are wholly and totally entities of the state of Michigan, and we have to exist on the crumbs that they either give us or allow us to raise. We had to get creative just to ask our residents for a millage for more money so that we could provide funding for our fire department. Uh, because if we hadn't created an authority with East Point, the law would not have allowed us to do that. There was no money, no fat in the budget to cut and keep it. It was either pass the tax or you don't have a fire department. So it's a very, very tough situation uh, that we're in that we have to uh, try to cope with. So uh, I'm proud of what we've done with this budget, and uh, I recommend approval. So move. Support. 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 Sorry. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Uh, civic announcement, Bev Holland. Oh, that's, uh, show cause. Public comment also. Okay. Oh, you got the public comment too. This is public comment now. Yeah, this is public comment. Oh, you sat here long enough to hear, think of something. Uh, Beth Holland, 305 West Milton. Uh, last night about 11.30, I saw a car stop at the corner at Ford and Milton, head southbound, and it always gets my attention when they come to a complete stop, because that's a rarity. So the car stopped, and it crept forward, and I heard something that sounded like a champagne cork popped, followed by a on the concrete. One of my neighbor's young daughters, she's about 19 years old, um, Councilman Webb helped me out, is it the ball joint? that yeah. fell off yeah. or tie something, something fell off the front. So this poor young lady is two blocks from home. Her dad comes up and uh, in the 45 minutes it took to locate a neighbor that had a car trailer to get her out there, every single car 
that came through the intersection one way or the other stopped to offer and render aid if she needed help. Not that they're mechanics, but they were willing to make a phone call, call a tow truck, call her parents, not really realizing that her parents and other family were there. So something to be proud of. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else with civic comments? Good evening, everybody. Helene Zack, Oakland County Commissioner for Hazel Park and other communities. Um, I do want to follow up on the off-road vehicle park. We're probably about a year or two years away from it. It's in development, but it is coming. Um, we still are hearing uh, from a lot of different people regarding the vaccination policy of Oakland County, and I do want to reiterate the state passed a new vaccination policy that requires instead of just going to your children's doctor to get a waiver, you need to go to the county health department to get that waiver now before you start school. And part of the new county policy is that you also have to get an et watch an educational video for 30 minutes to learn about vaccinations, and you are required to bring your child. What public health across the country has found is that a lot of people really don't know the accurate information, pros and cons of why to vaccinate or not. And so this educational program helps give people accurate information to decide whether they want to vaccinate their child or not. Um, and so that's what's going on. We've heard from many pediatricians in favor of our policy. We've also heard from residents against it. I heard several parents, you know, they were very tearful presentations that have lost their children because they weren't vaccinated or somebody near them wasn't vaccinated. And so, you know, I do stand behind the, pub, you know, the county pi uh, policy of good public health and educating people so they're making informed decisions. Um, I also want to talk about on your telephone bills, we are all charged emergency service. It's usually as a tax and emergency 911 fee. And one of the things that I do as county commissioner is we have to vote on that surcharge, that fee, every year. And overall, Oakland County has had lower fees. This present year, it's been 20 cents per cell phone or per line and we are raising it to 28 cents, and let me explain why. We are at the, what this does, it funds our emergency response system, and we are at the end life of equipment, and so we will need to be replacing the radios in our police department here, consoles, and building out the system with new technology. Right now, we are running on <coughs> copper telephone lines, but we are going to be moving into fiber and other forms of communication. That means that if somebody wants, it at a future date, wants to text 911, wants to text a photo, you'll be able to do that <coughs> at a future date with this new system. So we're raising some additional money right now to help start funding that. And then we have to look at it again to see, you know, there might be a new charge, an additional charge the following year to for support the infrastructure. One of the things that um, some of us were looking at is whether we could use some other funding in the county, such as not um, giving back a millage, give back and use some other sources in the rolling budget to support this critical source of public safety and infrastructure. And another thing that we're doing is trying to lobby the state so that we can get accurate phone, phone counts from the telephone companies. Because if there are more, if they are, they are mandated to report the number of phone lines, but the telephone companies don't do that. So then we can't 
assess the accurate amount of fees. So we're watching that. Roads being a hot topic. So after the road millage, and there were some of us that did not want to roll back the Oakland County millage. We wanted to invest in invest that money into the roads, and I know that this council voted on that. And then there was another proposal to allocate some other funding out of the Oakland County budget to fix potholes, and that didn't go through. So the day after the millage vote went down, Brooks Patterson, our county executive, has proposed contributing $2 million from Oakland County funds to the Road Commission to invest in equipment and fixing potholes. So a resolution was introduced last week. And it's a pittance. Frankly, I think that we should be investing more <coughs> from the county to help the communities yeah. with roads. So that also is going on. Um, and um, that's it for tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner? Yes. I have a question mm -hmm. for clarification. Uh, the telephone fee that you indicated that's going from 20 to 28 cents uh, to update equipment. Um, am I, would I understand that correctly then to mean that the county is going to help municipalities pay for their updating of equipment? Yes. Excellent. That'd be good. Good. Frankly, Excellent. we would like the, you know, the county, <coughs> frankly, I understand the budgets here, mm -hmm. and the more the county can oversee and pay for it, the better. That's what we think. <laughs> and, you know, and, and we were trying to do some negotiate. I frankly didn't vote for this proposal in finance, <coughs> although it's a critical and I support it because we were trying to negotiate some other funding streams. Didn't happen, but we're working on it, trying. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Madam Mayor, I want to thank Commissioner uh, Zach for her hard work and for her recognition that Oakland County is a rich county. And given the fact that the state of Michigan is not going to ride to our aid anytime soon with any kind of assistance whatsoever, it would be nice if county government could help us with some more things and pick up some of the costs. Uh, for us, we have, uh, I guess, that a broken system of municipal finance at the state level, and it would be nice if the county that is, you know, much more well off than we are could help us by providing us with some of those things. So thank you for thank you. Every bit helps my local CVTs, and I understand that. So we're trying to allocate resources in a better way. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. That's what I like to do for us. <laughs> Thanks. So. And good luck at Harvard if I don't see you before you go. <laughs> Mayor? Any more? Yes. Uh, civic announcement. Memorial Day weekend's coming up next yes. week. Uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Uh, come on over to the park. Bring your kids. Enjoy the time with the family. Hopefully it doesn't rain on Memorial Day and we'll have a nice parade. If it is raining, we're still going to walk in there. <laughs> so, but uh, thank you. Anybody else that has civic comments? Having non closed civic comments. Um, public comments? Public comments. Good evening. My name is Courtney Pratt Sanders, 102 Guthrie Avenue, Madison Heights. And I'm here tonight uh, with the board trustee for Michigan's Political Action Committee for Animals. Um, I so badly want to expound on what Commissioner Zach said about the roads and the budget get back. Um, I really think that the surplus from Oakland County should absolutely be given back to reinvest in the roads. It's our best solution and there's $75 million. But instead, where each household is gonna get back $8 because Brooks Patterson wants to say in his 2016 re-election that he gave a tax break. So I'm actually here tonight to talk about the um, breed-specific ordinance in Hazel Park. And I understand that on the agenda it's listed as a second reading. And I would like to request that if it's going to remain as a second reading that we table it and not vote this evening, 
or change it to a first reading. We were just handed a copy of this as I walked in this evening. We haven't had a chance to really look at it and digest it and give you the feedback, the thoughtful feedback that it deserves. We've been partnered with you guys for some time now. Um, two hours ago at about five o'clock, I, I was sent a part of the ordinance, but it was missing pages. And so it wasn't until we walked in this morning that we received it. And so as I was tempted to review it while everyone else is talking, mm -hmm. point out a couple of things that concern me. Um, the anti-chaining presentation you received from Chained was actually given this morning to Oakland County and they passed it unanimously out of the Public Service Committee. And so in a couple of weeks it will go before the four, full Board of Commissioners um, and to pass as a resolution for Oakland County. Um, if Hazel Park doesn't pass the anti-chaining ordinance as it was presented, you will be the first city in the state to reject it, which is just surprising. It seemed like such a, an easy win. I do see the sentence that was added that an adult shall be present on the property at all times that a dog is tethered. Um, if someone's inside asleep for 12 hours and their dog is chained in the backyard in sub-zero weather, they're in compliance with the ordinance and it doesn't address all the concerns we brought to you before about lack of exercise and socialization. If someone in the household is home all the time, they don't ever have to step foot in the backyard to spend time with the dog, train it, socialize it. Um, it's just they're on the property so the dog can be chained 24 seven. So that's a concern. Um, I have a concern about pit bull owners not being able to have their windows open. Um, not everyone has air conditioning and on a hot day you can't open your windows. It doesn't even stipu um, stipulate what if I have bars on my windows already or what about a basement window that's at the, the top of the ceiling that dog can't possibly climb the drywall and get out. There's just, it's very vague, and I think that's a little overreaching. Um, and I'm also concerned about the six-foot fence with a secure top. It would be financially impossible for me to put a secure top on my entire fenced yard, in which case I'm then segmenting a smaller portion for my dog, and we're right back to a lack of exercise and socialization. So again, I either ask that you table this so that you have an opportunity to get thoughtful feedback from your residents and advocates, or that perhaps this is a first reading. So again, there's more time for changes. Thank you. Any more public comments? Good evening, Council. Uh, Alyssa Sullivan, 23313 Hoover Avenue, Hazel Park. Um, again, I'm here to speak on behalf of the Pitbull Amendment. Um, there were some situations that we had spoken um, about in our previous meeting um, that we had hoped would maybe apply to all dogs. Um, the leash issue here under uh, 604-205-2A leash. Um, no, person, no person shall permit a pit bull dog to be kept on a chain rope or any other type of leash outside of its kennel, pen, or fence unless an adult person is in physical control of the leash, such, such dogs may not be leashed to inanimate objects such as trees, posts, fence, or buildings. Um, I would prefer, and I would hope that as a general consensus of safety, that we would prefer that all dogs, that would apply to all dogs under this amendment. Um, I don't think any child should be in control of a dog for many reasons, um, mostly because 90% of, I believe they said 84% of pit bull, actually all animal bites, dog bites, occur with uh, children or the elderly because the people are not in control of the situation. 80, I believe it's 84.7% of dog bites occur in those situations where the, the dog is not be able to be controlled. So a child being in control of any breed of dog um, is a scary, a scary thought to me. And also if you consider why children's bites tend to be in their face, it's because it's face level with the dog. Mm -hmm. The dog's gonna bite what is in front of its face. Um, the, um, the Im under that same section, uh, 604-205, this was in the previous legislation and this uh, upset me probably the most of any of the things, the immediate impoundment and disposal of a dog. I know that we've been, as a community, giving people five days. Um, I, would, I would prefer if we had a, a time frame for people that are non-compliant. Um, to have the opportunity to rehome their dogs. I don't think anybody in the city wants to start seizing dogs and euthanizing dogs. I don't think that's, I don't think that's a benefit to anybody, um, unless the dog, of course, has bitten somebody and that's a different situation. Um, and um, what Courtney had said about the um, tethering ordinance, I believe that should always apply to all dogs. I don't think any dog is gonna be a healthy 
community member if it's a constantly chained animal um, that's also not being a good neighbor if you are continually having an animal in your yard that is not contributing to your community. Um, I believe that we all want the same thing. Pit bull owners, every other dog owner, we all want the same thing. We want a safe community. We want, we want a lowering of dog bites. We want safe dogs. We want safe children. We want safe neighbors. Um, I don't want a dog as a lawn ornament. I don't want my neighbor to have a dog as a lawn ornament. I don't like the way that looks, and it, it physically makes me upset. Um, additionally, that dog is a risk, and that property is a risk. So those are all things that I think we should maybe further address. Um, I was confused about, there's an amendment in here to um, subparagraph B and C, which I was unable to find subparagraph C under the part uh, seven amendment. I found B, but I was unable to find C. So um, like Ms. Brolt said, I would um, prefer that if this could be maybe the first reading and we still would have an, a chance to address as a second reading and work a little bit further on the actual wordage of, of the final ordinance. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any more public comments? I have nine closed public comments. Any objections? Any objections? Agenda. Madam Mayor. Yes. I would uh, move that we approve the consent agenda as presented with the exception of um, uh, with You the, can approve all the ones that I had. But I just want to have discussion on right. those. With the objection of Never mind. Um, <laughs> I'll support. <laughs> okay. okay, we're supporting it. So we'll support. Um, uh, uh, Madam Mayor, before you yes. vote on this, I want to draw your attention to uh, a couple of uh, agenda items here. And maybe uh, Mr. Campbell may want to uh, speak a little bit about them uh, as well. Uh, but uh, the first one that I wanted to talk about was that we are. Uh, approving applications for uh, Seller Men's LLC uh, to do a microbrewery and a small winemaker. Yes. And I believe the uh, uh, future proprietors of Seller Men's are here. Uh, uh, they're going to be going into the old uh, Boyard's Lumber building, and uh, we look forward to welcoming yet another new business to the city of Hazel Park. As well, we were also pleased to uh, present uh, earlier uh, the new uh, unveiling of Mabel Gray and James Regato, who's an internationally renowned chef, bringing his new restaurant to Hazel Park. We now have uh, these gentlemen here uh, bringing their uh, brewery and winemaking skills uh, to the city of Hazel Park as well. I think that we are seeing uh, a real renaissance in our community's uh, business, in our city's business community. So. Folks, do you want to come up and introduce yourself before we uh, approve the application? Uh, totally put them on the spot. Obviously, you know they weren't planning on doing this, but uh, your names and address. Thank you. Just, mm -hmm. uh, my name is Jason Petrosic. I live at 133 West Browning Avenue um, in Hazel Park, right? Hazel Park. Ian or Douglas Givens, uh, 3641 Rochester Hills, Michigan, Winding Brook Circle. Thank you. Um, both of us uh, are past employees of B Nectar Meadery in Ferndale. And uh, he was there for six years. I was there for four. We've had a lot of experience um, in the like professional alcohol making, craft beer, wine, spirits. And um, finally are going off on our own, and we're really excited to take over the old lumber yard. And we have a good uh, landlord who's really working with us, and the city's been working with us really well, helping us out with some sewer things. And it's all looking really good, and we're hoping for maybe around September, um, if we're lucky. <laughs> but, um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So we got um, the forms we were waiting to get approved by you. That's the last bit of paperwork we have to give to any other government as of right now. After that, it's just going to be inspections and then waiting for them to give us the go-ahead. Great. Cool. That's, 
This is very exciting. It is. It's very exciting. Yes, very. And the wine's up my alley, too. Uh, <laughs> cider, too. I don't know if anyone likes cider. Thank you. We have, um, mm -hmm. yeah. And we have a lot of um, interest in, you know, a lot of festivals and stuff like that, you know, a lot of hopes for throwing small gatherings and stuff like that and utilizing Green Acres as much as we can. Maybe someday we can see a giant beer festival out of Green Acres if we're lucky. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, Thank you. we look forward to working with you. We hope that you're very successful here and we'll do everything that we can to make sure that your business is successful. Mm -hmm. Welcome to Hazel Park. Yes. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. For administrative reports? Uh, yes. yes, and then the other thing that I want to talk about under administrative reports is, uh, I mean, pardon me, under the consent agenda before you pass it, is uh, the resolution here supporting the Oakland County One Stop Ready program. Uh, Mayor Parisi and I met with Deputy County Executive who came in, discussed with us this program. They asked that the City of Hazel Park uh, participate in the program this year. We agreed to do so. It's somewhat similar to the Redevelopment Ready Communities program that we participated in uh, a few years ago by the Michigan Suburbs Alliance. It just deals with us streamlining our practices and uh, coming in line with the new ways that businesses are expecting to deal with communities. Uh, and what I was very pleased to learn, and I'm sure the mayor will agree with me, is that we were already doing pretty much everything right by the time that we were done talking to the representative he said, well, I hope you join this so that you can help convince some of the other communities that have onerous processes and, and extensive uh, committee appearances and things like that that are very bureaucratic in nature. If you show them what you're doing, you may help us convince other communities that this is the way to go. So we were pleased to join. I don't know if we'll be able to learn anything from this, but we're always open to that. I mean, someone may have a best practice that we're unaware of, but uh, we're certainly willing to share what we've been doing here. And like I said, uh, we've been uh, very lucky. Again, I'll mention James Regato a million times because we are so happy that he is coming here. Like I said, when the top chef in not just Michigan but the Great Lakes region wants to open his restaurant, where does he go? Well, duh, he goes to Hazel Park because we are the cool place to be. Now we will host Sellermans, and I'm sure they're going to be, you know, a great, cool signature business for us. Uh, we have Great Lakes Burgers coming to the old big boy on the service drive. So we're filling a lot of these vacancies now. All of a sudden, we are kind of the next cool place to be, and I think that's a, definitely, obviously, a good thing for our community. So but we're going to participate in this program to see if we can't learn anything else and do some networking and see if we can't even improve upon what I think has been a pretty good system so far. And when I talk about how good things are, I want to recognize uh, my wonderful friend uh, and assistant, Jeff Campbell, for all the hard work that he's uh, doing. I'm surprised that uh, James Regato didn't call the police and try to charge Jeff with stalking him, but uh, it, uh, it, he, he did uh, really uh, work hard uh, to, to, to reel him in. And uh, again, we didn't have to work all that hard because he was just excited about being here. He actually knocked on our door. So uh, again, uh, I'm grateful to what we're seeing here as a, a community business renaissance, and I hope everybody is successful. And I encourage our residents, when these businesses open, to, to visit them yeah. mm -hmm. and to make sure that they spend their money locally and uh, they give these new businesses a chance because uh, they can open up and we can attract them and we can help them and we can work with them, but they'll only stay here if people visit them. So it's up to them to have a good product and it's up to them uh, to, to make their, uh, their, their businesses a great experience for our residents and for anybody else uh, in the region that wants to come and visit them. But it's up to our folks, too, to shop locally and support yeah. locally as well. So I encourage everyone to do that. Yeah. But again, I'm excited. Welcome to our town. Yeah, very good. Yeah, thank you. All right, we at the consent agenda yet? <laughs> yeah, it looks like it's okay. Yeah. Okay, I'll take it. Yeah. Right, there's been a motion already motion. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Now we're on administration uh, reports. Yes, Madam Mayor, the uh, <coughs> legislature has uh, passed some new requirements with respect to uh, freedom of information procedures. Uh, Ms. Rubb may wish to comment further. Uh, she has revised our guidelines <coughs> to bring us into compliance with those statutes. Okay. Hold on. Ms. Rubb, 
is all regard. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I so moved for what? discussion. Oh. Okay. This, so this is basically what the House and Senate, the state passed, right? It's a re, like we always have That's to do, exactly just incorporating. We had, we had to follow what the statutes required us to do, which is all that you have right there. They will be at every public building in the city of Hazel Park. They will be on our website. Um, all the procedures and guidelines are there that will be followed by the employees administration. Mary Ann Jerokowski will be the new FOIA coordinator, not only for the city, but for all departments, including police and fire. Um, it's, it's a streamlined process. It makes government more open to the people. And we ask that you pass this, which will go into effect July 1st. Mayor Tracy? Yes. A question for the city attorney. Uh, were we not to do this, uh, what would happen? Would the state come in and do it for us? Or? No, we would be taken to court and be fined and penalized. Okay. <laughs> That's, even a That's good enough for me. <laughs> Thank you. Again, as we were explaining before at the beginning of the meeting, you don't have a choice. Yes. Okay. Are ready? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Uh, approve ordinance to amend Title VI animals, chapter dogs, cats, and animals to allow pit bulls. Mayor Tracy? Yes. I'd like to make a motion to table this to get some more information based upon the, uh, that we maybe make a change to no child walk, be walking a dog. I can believe that one, that some dogs are, can overtake a child and make the, make a big, we bad actually situation. We had in there no, that was only adults. That's what well, that, that was. was. Yeah. Bulls, I, but it's I think all dogs would be dog. more appropriate on that sure. one as well. All animals. Yeah. It's just, you know, if you've got a child that's maybe weighs 50 pounds, Six, seven years so we're old. We're asking not to have children in our right. ordinance now that we right. said it would but be it an adult. To, but it needs to be put in there on all dogs. All dogs. All dogs. Okay. It needs to make that change. I'll support I thought them. we did that. Well, well, well uh, Madam Mayor. Yes. It, it is, so the motion is just to table. table. Yes. So next and right. based on us tabling it, we will have input yeah. from right. people. What I'd like right. you to do, like and, to and again, I'll get with... Uh, with Courtney and with Diane, that we may be closer than they think, mm -hmm. but they just got it. Uh, they may have a bigger comfort level with some of the things after we have a chance to talk with them. Right. Uh, but I'll meet with them, and then I want each of you to think about any changes. We did kind of pass it quickly right. on first reading. We hadn't really expected it to go on first reading, so we tried to get it together as quick as we could tonight. We think we have everything in it. Uh, the administration... Uh, has no objection to, uh, you know, uh, further restrictions on tethering for all breeds as well. Mm -hmm. uh, think about that, though. There are some reasons to leave a limited amount of tethering, uh, fence aggression, uh, things like that. But, uh, uh, but we don't have a problem uh, with further restrictions. It's just how we're going to enforce them. Right. But well, we're open to what, that as well. That's why I want to table and have some discussion as to where areas maybe we need to take a look at. Also, the, the fencing height. Requirement should be six foot, but maybe not over top of the six foot. It maybe be a little cumbersome to top it off. It, we, right, because it used to be on the other ones. Right, right. Right, right. Exactly. Mayor Precy. Yes. I would just also like to ask uh, the folks who have suggestions and and ideas on this. Submit them in writing to us before the next meeting so that we can consider them before the next meeting, just like you would have liked to have had this ordinance before this meeting. Yeah, uh, Mayor, it, it forward them to the city attorney uh, in writing, and that way that'll give us a chance then. We'll, we'll share them all with the council, and uh, we'll take a look at them. I don't think there's, like I said, we're probably not as far apart on these things as you, you think we are. Pretty close. But we can tweak it. It's just some of these things is getting the language right, too. And some of these things, because we talked about the no tethering thing. We actually, we were going to do that. And then Nikki actually kind of said, well, no, it'd be better if we just could tether it while they were home. But then you raised a good point that they could be home asleep and they could have it tethered, too. And that would count. And I, don't, I think that kind of defeats the intent of the ordinance. So we'll take a look at that. But give us your the other the other suggestions. Uh, the other thing I'd like to maybe look at is 
uh, anyone who has a felony on the just on the more dangerous do dogs. I don't know if we can do that or not. Maybe because they don't show I mean, responsibility I mean, for the animal. I didn't know if it was a responsibility thing to the you know they they showed a little irresponsibility at one time in their life. I understand, but uh, being that the dog may be a little more aggressive, we want someone that's more responsible to handle that dog. If you contact me, then you'll have the whole ordinance. This just amends certain. Parts. So you're not seeing the You're not seeing its totality. Like so I think that you need to put that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do we include the animal control officer in our talk so we can talk about how it would be enforced? And if you'll look at the, ordin the whole ordinance first and then put your right. questions down, then we'll be able to be, to think about it, be more prepared when we speak. I think we yeah. both, both sides probably need Absolutely. To You can, uh, you can, since we've already passed that in first reading, you can table this and just leave the first reading passed. That'll be the quickest mm -hmm. thing. We'll make the amendments, bring it back to you. Okay. For the record, what we are doing now is we are taking the information of anybody that has a pit bull. We're processing their uh, information, but we are stopping short of issuing a license. We are allowing, I guess you allow a registration, but it's, a, it's kind of a, a midway point we can't issue the license right. because the ordinance isn't passed. Because the ordinance isn't passed. But we're taking the information, yep. we're taking the application, so that they're not going to be prosecuted. Correct. People are coming in now. We would encourage people to come in now. And please do that. You may put that on your Facebook page. Mm -hmm. Is that Willing? No, it's a roll call. Mm -hmm. Roll call. Councilman Webb? Aye. Councilman Selman? Yes. Councilman Keaton? Yes. Councilman Lefteros? Yes. Mayor Parisi? Yes. All in favor? Aye. No, that, that no, takes okay. a good thing. Yeah, we got it. New business for boards and commissions. We're in boards and commissions. Nothing for boards and commissions. Tabled items. Nothing for either one of those business. items. Business. No. Uh, as Councilman Webb said, Memorial Day is coming. Uh, come on out and visit the City of Hazel Park's Memorial Day Festival at our uh, recreation center. The carnival itself opens on Thursday night. Uh, the uh, carnival will run from Thursday night, Friday night. All day Saturday, Sunday, Monday after the parade until 10 p.m. on uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday till 11. Uh, come on out and uh, visit the carnival. It's a great time. Uh, the Lions Club maintains a refreshment tent there. It's a great way to come and to, to see old friends uh, or to make some new friends. It really is a, a nice time, and I encourage everyone to please come on out and visit. And since we're on that subject, uh, Mayor, yes, uh, we're going to have the parade on Monday. And since we had the discussion about the dog ordinance, be a responsible pet owner. Take care of your pet and be responsible for others and respect their space as well with your pet. And we'll all have a good time and be, and be safe. Thank you. Uh, no new, new business. We're, we're in the show cause hearings now. Public hearing. Two. Three, public hearing, 226 West Hayes. Your name and address, please. Uh, Daniel Atti, 82 South Ardmore, Pontiac, Michigan. Yes, they are. Yeah, they're just different colors. First page is the list of violations that I received, uh, uh, I think, two weeks ago, uh, about a week ago, a week and a half ago, something like that. Uh, the next page is uh, taxes have uh, about $5,700.
in taxes paid the very next day uh, since the last meeting. The very next day was paid. Uh, and uh, the rest are the pictures showing uh, some of the rehab work, some of the some of the beautiful things that we like about this house. Uh, Mayor, uh, Mayor Preece. Yes. Point of order. Uh, yes. Should we open the public oh, yes, hearing right. before uh, we allow anyone to speak? Or? After he speaks, then we open up the public hearing. Thank you. Okay. After he speaks. Okay. Um, so. Those, those are some of the pictures that uh, that's why we fell in love with this house. We are willing to do everything and any, anything possible uh, to save this house. Uh, now, uh, we have done this previously, as I've said before. Uh, in the other location, the main beam that was going across the house, uh, that was sagging, that was bowing. And we had to put actually a footing down underneath in the and to, to raise it up, bring it to level, that main, main beam. Uh, at, so, uh, I've, I mean, uh, I have not gotten an inspection report uh, that was performed last week. I don't know if you guys have a copy of it or not. Do you guys have any inspection reports? We have it. I did not get it, no. I have it. So the one on the right is the, the additional ones? The one on the left. Yeah. The one on the left is what you had before. Okay, that I'm aware of, right. Did you want time to look at that with a patch or look at that one? If you could, yes, yes, so I have a time, uh, so I can, right, thank you. Mary, would that be okay? That's this one, so he has time to look at that? He didn't get it ahead of time. The inspection, the updated inspection report. So, so we, we can pass, Madam Mayor, we can pass on this one for now and then just bring up the next uh, three uh, show class hearings and then bring him back. Or um, we can do that. So the, the, the reason I'm looking the, through before I say something, I can say, yes, I can do this. I want to have a look at it. Sure. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. so didn't know you didn't receive it. No, I, I did not receive it. But from what I've seen right now, um, these are all the things that I was willing to do. So, Mayor Parisa, yes. uh, all we're going to do is change the order of business. We're going to put you last instead of first. Oh, that, that yes. will then That's give you an opportunity. Yeah, okay. yeah, I would oh, move that we change yes. the order of business. Support. Support. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. <laughs> Two three four four zero oh, two three four four zero Carlisle. Someone representing two three four four zero Carlisle. Any one for two three four four zero Carlisle. Seeing no one, uh, Madam Mayor, uh, you want to open the public? Yes. I'm sorry. Open, open two three four four zero Carlisle. Do you wish to speak on this matter? Close it. Close hearing. Uh, Madam Mayor, uh, the administration uh, recommends demolition of this property. Mayor Preece. Yes. So move. Support. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. 2344 four, Hazelwood. Anybody representing 2344 four, Hazelwood? Anybody representing? Having none? Anyone want to speak on it? Anyone? Public hearing. Oh, two, two, three, three, four, four, Hazelwood. Okay, two, there you three, go. Three, four, four. Yeah, four, four, Hazelwood. And the other one's two, three, four, four over there. <laughs> They're one with four. Are you, are you representing this? No, no, I just know I live on the street. Right oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh. No one wishes to speak. Close public hearing. Close. Close. 
Mayor? Yes. Make a motion to file the administration's recommended order to demolish the structure within 30 days at 23344 four. Hazelwood. Two, three, three, four, four. Well, the one was two, three, four. To be Support. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Administration again recommends demolition on this. Gentlemen? So moved. Support. All in favor? Aye. Motion carried. Again, for those in the audience and those at home who uh, see us ordering demolition and we order demolition within 30 days at the city level, that doesn't mean we're going to be able to get this thing demolished in 30 days. We have to set out the bids. We have to get a bidder. Uh, the city of Detroit is demolishing a significant number of homes. We will get these demoed as soon as we can. So I don't want anybody to have any unrealistic expectations, but there's a lot of work for the demo companies. So it's going to it probably will be longer than 30 days before. Okay, we can go back to the public hearing for 326 West Hayes. Mayor? Yes. Uh, has the, the, has the applicant have adequate time to go over the items? Mr. Atti? Yes. You ready? You're back on. What if we listen here from... Let him go first. Should we take a five-minute recess? Let him have some... Does he have... Do you have enough time? We'll take a recess if you need a little time. Mayor, I recommend that we take a five-minute okay. recess. Fine. Support. All in favor? Aye. Aye. C eighty two South Ardmore, Pani Fish. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you for the time uh, because I was just startled first time I saw the report. Uh, as I've gone through the report. Okay. Uh, additional things that have been added are replaced bathtubs around. Uh, it says uh, floor movement is stabilize, stabilize real, uh, rear fro floor room joists. What had happened is they had an extension done to the front and to the back, I believe, in 2004 5. Uh, that it, sometimes, even with new houses, you have these where the new houses are built and uh, you may get some kind of movement happening or something like that. So, between the old house and the new house, there is. Uh, the, in one of the rooms, it goes a little bit, just a little bit south. So that that's what it's talking about. Uh, replace kitchen faucet, uh, yes, no problem. Uh, replace bathtub diverter, no problem. Uh, replace damaged sanitary waste piping at the basement level. Uh, that's one of the PVC pipe. Uh, it was broken when the copper was stolen. Uh, uh, replace furnace and hot water tank. Yes, I was going to plan on I planned on doing that as well. That was already there. Uh, it says roof rafter system failing, sewing occurring. Uh, this needs to be stabilized basically more. Uh, so uh, I would have to, this is the first time I'm finding out uh, as far as the pictures or I've, I've actually been in the attic up there. Uh, I personally couldn't see anything like that, but they, it, 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 it is new shingles on the roof. Uh, they did an extension onto the roof as well. You have pictures of the attic as well. Um, so, uh, I, that one, uh, if, if it needs to be done, I'm already committed enough. Ev everything and anything is fixable, and I'm very committed to this. So, uh, I, you know, we, we paid the taxes the very next day. Whatever it takes from now on will be done. It will be done, and I have, I'm, I'm putting money where my mouth is. I'm willing to put a $15,000 bond. This will be done. This can be saved. There is no reason. With the pictures I've provided you, uh, you can see why I'm trying to save this house. Uh, any kind of, you know, it says about have sewer televised to confirm sewer is not obstructed. So there is a possibility that the, the roots might, because the sewer goes to the back, through the back, 
roots could have gotten in the sewer. Sometimes old houses, roots do get into the sewer line and they clog it up. I have no idea if that needs, the good thing that I've seen is, the, the, right, the piping that's going out the house is about four feet from the ground level, from the outside ground level. Uh, that's what I've seen. And if that needed to be, the worst case scenario is, let's say it collapsed, the pipe did collapse. If that needed to be done as well, I will get it done. I don't think it is. I think roots got in there because there's a, there's a couple of giant trees in the backyard. Uh, they're there and these are, uh, these are the trees that have lo long roots. Sometimes these trees can grow one and a half times their uh, size in the root system. So if that's obstructed, I will, uh, I will, uh, I will uh, make it clear. Okay. Um, now it was talking about uh, the other thing. It was talking about that this is a non-conforming structure. Uh, that houses built in Hazel Park now need to be 1,200 square feet. Um, now, th I, this is what I was personally planning on doing. There's a lot right next to my house that's up for sale right now. I wanted to buy that lot, build a garage on it, and connect, connect it to the house because I like, I like to have a connection between the, between the two. Right now, uh, it, and if that needs to be done, I would have to buy the lot next to it uh, and then make an improvement. Improvement things that I was planning to do, with, regardless of this, I was uh, planning on making a porch. Uh, and the backyard, if I try to make a porch in the backyard, I really am, you know, it's not that big of a backyard anyhow. So I was planning on doing it to the side, something like connected with the garage and the backyard, have a porch as well as, I'm sorry, a deck is what I'm talking about, a deck in the back uh, with, uh, with the garage. But that was, uh, you know, if, uh, that's all dependent on the, you know, me acquiring the lot next to it. It's not, it's not a lot that's owned by the city. It's, uh, held, it's actually posted for sale right now uh, by Keller Builders. I'm very interested in buying that lot. And, uh, that would, but even if that wasn't done, this house is, uh, you, it's, it's a two-bedroom house. Both the bedrooms have walk-in closets. Uh, extensions was extension was done as well as uh, there's laundry area uh, on the upstairs uh, so it's 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 a nice size house for a two bedroom the 1200 square feet I think is is more uh, for three bedroom house like having a three bedroom house uh, <coughs> so that would be upon you guys but any kind of additional issues that you see here yes I am I am very much willing to do all of this. <coughs> Typically, the, the, the owner that buys it, uh, they buy it with just, you know, the intentions, you know, everything's going to be okay, I'm going to do it. Once they start tearing into it, it's a matter of discovery. You know, like, wow, I didn't realize, you know, now i got to reframe this wall or, or this or that. Cost just escalates on them, and, and a lot of them end up abandoning the projects because of it. Thank you. They just walk. <coughs> One more question. Yeah, we you mentioned questions sewer, sewage in there, Roger. Uh, at a previous inspection, but not the most recent inspection. Correct. But correct. It's yeah. Been is it, yeah. Was it certified, cleaned up? Do we know any? I have no clue. It just basically we could move around in the area. You could go in there still and wasn't not really what we would consider sanitized. But uh, you know, we were comfortable enough to be able to move around in the other areas where we could get a better view of what's going on. Uh, you know, and probably that 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 flood that happened probably ended up raising that water level up, and you know, a lot of it going back down the drain or whatever. But uh, it definitely was looked at by a plumbing contractor. Contractor indicated it had problems and the cost estimate to repair that sewer or replace was $2,500. Questions? Yes. One more question. 
What is your recommendation? My recommendation would be to demolish the structure. I don't have any other questions. Yes. I don't have any other No more questions? Okay. No more questions? Having none? Thank you, Roger. Okay. So, um, what be, before we bought the house, when we came to the basement, we didn't see any sewage. I don't know what happened. I have no idea. I really don't know. Uh, but it, it 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 was on the market for sale for twenty eight thousand five. All the, uh, with, with all the damages. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, whoever, whoever was trying to sell it probably cleaned it up because they were trying to get a good amount out of it. Uh, now, I, I don't know what happened to the sewage, but it did happen. Uh, it probably had something like that. I don't know. But things I've heard from the neighbors, uh, you know, yes, that could have been a concern at some time. Uh, if that is an issue, we have bought many houses in the Metro Detroit. Mm -hmm. We own a lot of houses. Mm -hmm. We do have, we do deal with things of this nature. Uh, one thing I wanted to ask the inspector, when he was looking at the wall, the west wall, at the bowing, uh, I have a video of it where I, I pull the stake onto the uh, siding, and the siding goes in and out, meaning, the siding cable. Is that what you're talking about in the middle of, close to the, close to the soffit in the middle of the house, where it bubbles mm -hmm. up a little bit? Is that what, is that what you're talking about? I haven't had a look at it. You see the pictures. I don't know how, what, uh, how much you see the going or not. Uh, as far as the naked eye, I do not. I could have yes. um, Trusses can be installed. So trusses meaning more support for the roof. Uh, trusses can be installed for the roof. Uh, so anything, anything of that nature can be taken care of. Uh, now, other speakers also say, you know, why I didn't come up for anyone else's. I cannot laugh. What I say, I will do. I have done it before, and I will do it. And if you give me the opportunity, get done. We do own a lot of houses, so we have dealt with these issues. This one, we will be able to fix up as well. You know, all, the, all the problems he's talking about, we have come up to those problems and give, be able to fix them. Okay, um, you're, you're becoming repetitive. Do you have anything new to add to that? Yes. Uh, after the flood, I did go there the very next day. I did look at it. Uh, and it, 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 to me, uh, you know, I that much water. With, with the reports I've seen elsewhere, you know, the whole city was flooded, the, the streets were bubbling, everything was happening. But on Hayes itself, there was not that much water uh, uh, compared to other streets, uh, you know, or north. Uh, so that, I was there the very next day when I had to deal with the property I grew up in. Uh, and, uh, so that's <coughs> and the market is going going up. Market is going up. It's you know any any kind of uh, it, the SCV is coming to ten thousand. That's not very realistic. I mean you guys you guys know that uh, the houses on this street have been selling for fifty thousand. You know forty thousand, fifty thousand. They've been selling uh, in that area. So a house looking like that, I really do believe, especially if we do any kind of addition to it, uh, especially a garage. We can that that's you know that's not ten thousand now. That that valuation of ten thousand is not very accurate. I, I just don't think so. Yes, uh, I, do, I have a question. Um, in one of your photos, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, the last two photos you're showing foundation footing. It's near the front of the house, and there's a gas meter coming in. I'm wondering what it is exactly you're trying to show us. What I'm trying to show is that uh, they have, uh, uh, it is an older basement, so they, on the outside walls, what they 
have done is they put cats up there. I, I am not an expert. From what it looks like, they, they put uh, they put a like a con like some kind of concrete around the outside as well. So that's just I'm, I'm trying to show the footing. Looks at the best. It looks cracked with weeds growing through the middle of it. If it's a foundation. Okay, I was just wondering if it was. Does anybody else have any questions for the applicant? One more thing I want to mention: the pictures that was taken by the building department. Uh, all the pictures were taken really close, as if zooming the problem, which is. Fair, but sometimes when you step back a little bit, look at the whole thing. Uh, like one of the doors we have, uh, it says rotten wood uh, door frame. But you look at the door; it's you know it's a frame. Yes, it needs to be you know it needs to be repaired. But when you some t some of the pictures that I've seen from the building department were zoomed in, looking as if you know if if, if, if the intent was to solve the problem, uh, that's great. But if it's if it's to just Say that the whole house looks like that. That's not fair. And there's no water coming into the house. There was no seepage of water. No soffits broken. No raccoons coming in. Squirrels coming in. Uh, I have pictures of the soffit. It's very solid. Uh, all new. All very newer soffit. Uh, you know, uh, newer windows as well. So all of that. And newer roof. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mayor Preece. Yes. I would move that we send council order dash zero four dash zero four six dash one five from our last meeting, which was a motion to do several things. And uh, I would, my motion is. The original decision to demolish the structure should still stand. And that decision at the last meeting was no longer yes. legal. <coughs> yes. Yes. And so it's null and void. Right. So yes. rescinding that motion is not necessary. What we need to, what we need to do is whether or not the original decision should be modified or upheld. There's no public discussion any longer. You don't think that procedurally rescinding this and making a new motion. Right. Okay. Right. You, you would want to deny the request to overturn the original decision. That's correct. That's correct. So, would you add that? Is that what you wanted to see? Uh, well, my intent was to rescind this and then see where we, where we go from there. Pardon? Okay. Well, if you look at our I minutes, I thought you said zero four zero four six zero six or one six. No, one five. Okay. Four six dash one five. Right. Yeah, the motion was by Keaton, seconded by. They passed the motion to rescind the motion. All in favor. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Well, what do you want to do? <laughs> I right from the beginning. Got to <laughs> do anything. Well, I don't think we ever officially made motion if we rescind this to uh, proceed with the recommendation of the administration so I would therefore do that support
So you, you wish to award the bid? You wish to award the bid for demolition? Because but, the <laughs> Mayor Preece, what is the recommendation of the city? What happened, which I wasn't here at that time, they're signing it out, I can notify the applicant that the decision was no and void based upon the fact that this type of procedure requires due process which is a notice and opportunity to be heard by all sides, including the public. That was not done because they came in and asked their questions. Remember, you have already acted at the end. You have already determined that in the past that this house should be demolished. You ordered that. Uh, the applicant challenged that order in circuit court, and the city prevailed in the circuit court. Okay, then by our rescinding our, our motion at the last meeting, the demolition can just proceed. They paid for everything. Well, I they thought we did the have the hearing just now. We just had the hearing, and okay. everybody was given the opportunity right. to under the statute and the ordinance. Decision whether or not that original decision stands or whether or not you modify it. The original decision to demolish. The original decision was to demolish. We have pulled our original, original demo yes. order from back in last year sometime. I know where Back in November. Madam Mayor, I, I know that this motion has been rescinded, but based on what the motion was, it was to come back before us at the hearing, and based on the newly ordered inspection, to determine whether or not the home was to be demolished or not. Given that inspection, given the response of the uh, building official, which I'm not an engineer, I'm not a building official, so based on what that uh, vote was and based on the building official's um, recommendations, I would move that we uh, demolished the house at uh, 326 West Hayes. Part that. Roll call. Yes. 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 I believe the lady is out of order. Yes, yes, yes. You have to sit down. You're out of order, okay? Out of order. Sit down, please. Vacations from department heads. anniversary of our country's and he will recognize 
Bratislava. Those efforts of the greatest generation to be just war against the evil empires that will want bad things to this planet. Oh, that generation is a great debt of gratitude. Uh, we'll be happy to work with the folks uh, from uh, the animal rescue groups to come up with some tweaks to the ordinance, hopefully. Uh, we can get your input as well. I spoke with them on the recess. We were very close. These are just some minor things to take. A lot of clarification on it, and they have some concerns, so I think we'll be able to, uh, to do that. And again, if you have no objections to how we're proceeding with the registration process, we'll be happy to do so. Uh, that's all that I have. Okay. And uh, I should probably speak on road funding. Road funding in Michigan at the state and local level is uh, a disgrace. And if you drive in Warren on 12 Mile, you'll see bumpy roads. If you drive in Southfield, you'll see bumpy roads. It's not a phenomenon that is unique to the city of Hazel Park. Uh, Ferndale does have its own dedicated road village. Uh, I hate to ask for more money, but that may be something that we have to look at in the future. If we're not going to adequately fund that roads, we'll have some resources that open up after we pay off, finally pay off. Uh, the John R. and the Nine Mile Road Bonds uh, next year, actually fiscal year 2017 will pay off. So, so it will be 2018 for we see the revenue. But that will free up some uh, additional resources as long as the state doesn't take uh, those uh, DDA funds up the way. So we could use some of those funds for repairs for John R. and the Nine Mile as well. This is not an easy situation. We've done the best that we can to make real repairs. It's broken, just like municipal finance is broken. Uh, there's not enough money in the pipeline to fix the roads. It's going to require additional revenue from some place <coughs> if we're going, to, we're going to do that at the state level or at the local level. This is a fact, basic math. Uh, you can be mad about it, but being mad doesn't solve the problem. We need to think our way through this, understand the situation, and uh, look for a solution. So more than happy about our road funding situation. If we have something uh, like this here, we may be able to, where we go, we may be able to uh, make that specific repair or some other things that are really bad. But again, if there are situations like that, unfortunately, across the city, we're not going to get that repair. We're just being it's a broken situation. Uh, the voters overwhelmingly and resoundingly uh, rejected proposal one, and there was a lot of moving parts to that. Proposal. And when I talked to people and explained it to them, there were things that they liked about it, uh, but I guess what they didn't like was its confusing nature. So that's the kind of stuff that Lansing has all the time with a whole bunch of moving parts. You very rarely see one package of one proposal that's voted on when they pass legislation. It's a package. So, uh, it's something our voters aren't used to, but that's what they do all the time. So hopefully there'll be another proposal, but I'm not looking for anything. City attorneys? <coughs> I'm looking forward to uh, the new restaurant and the new uh, brew house uh, coming in. Uh, good job, Jeff. We've got new exciting things coming here all the time. Jeff reports to us at, at our staff meetings. And uh, I, I know I'm going to with these new places. I've been to the Root restaurant already, uh, which is the one that he owns at this present time in White Lake, and it was, it was tremendous. I, I have seen uh, the mock up for the plans for Mabel Gray. Boy, is it going to be cool. I love that name. It's just going to be so cool. I can't believe how cool it's going to be. So, this is here. This is in Hazel Park. This is our town. So, great things are happening. We just had, uh, in fact, and I forgot to mention this during my closing comments, but you reminded me, uh, Mayor Creasy and uh, uh, Councilman Keaton, uh, Councilman Carroll, and a few others uh, of us were over at Kroger's for their uh, opening, reopening ceremony, and that was a multi-million dollar renovation uh, uh, 
program that they have except over there. And uh, Mayor Creasy was able to squeeze them for a $5,000 donation. I promise them as well. So again, uh, good things are happening in this city. Uh, we're seeing more and more investment. Capital sales just came in today. They want to do uh, an expansion. But well, wait a minute. They want to do a whole other 24,000 foot expansion on top of their original expansion. They want to do more. And they want to add that in. So we're getting investment all over the place. Eight okay. mile, save a lot's going in. Uh, things are turning. <clears throat> but everybody needs to understand and get this. And learn this and know this. Because I watch on Facebook. And people still don't understand how Michigan's system of municipal finance works. And they think that if we somehow get more people, we'll get more money. We're not going to do that. The only thing that can do is if they actually adhere to the old revenue sharing formula, where that was one of multiple criteria that could help us. But lately, they've just been appropriating that based on the last amount of money. So no, you don't get more money, but more people move in. If property values go up, you don't necessarily get more money. Remember, your existing property taxes, Revenues are capped at the rate of inflation. 5% of the rate of inflation, whatever you pay. Our expenses go up further than that. The only way that you can add to the tax base is through new construction, new physical construction. So I want to make that clear so that everybody understands that. As the Michigan Municipal League points out, cities across the state do a fantastic job of economic development for the state, for counties, for private businesses, and they share very very minimally in the proceeds of that. So, because our business district is not taken off, doesn't mean we're going to be flush with money. It's basically mathematically impossible. So we'll get some new revenue, hopefully from the 8-mile projects. But again, there are tax credits there as well to make that project go. So it's not going to be some great room for us in terms of our revenues. Remember, we're 99% process of demolition of homes is a must to the city of Hazel Park. I hear Roger testify that anything can be repaired. What I don't quite understand, and again, it's not my job and maybe I shouldn't make the comment. If somebody were to walk in here, and the, the risk that you face is if somebody says I can repair a home and they get into it and it's a disaster and that home sits there. What if somebody walked in a day and on this particular case said, I'll post $100,000 with the city today, cash money? What would you do at that point? Isn't the issue to preserve real estate if it can be preserved? Roger says anything can be preserved for money. How would the city be harmed in a situation? I'm not even talking about this case. I'm trying to get my head around it. <coughs> yes. If somebody doesn't have the ability and they're going to post $2,500 and start and the house is going to sit there and it's never going to get completed and it's the neighbors have put up with it for 18 months, the problem that we have is that these houses sit for 18 months and two years. But I think that there should be a provision in the statute that allows, and I think town council would have every right in requesting, if Roger says, repairs are $55,000. I think that a homeowner should have the right to post $55,000 cash to the city of Hazel Park and says, I'm going to complete this job. You have my $55,000. So that's my own personal thoughts, and I understand everybody has their own views. I just think that sometimes we get carried away on the concept of tearing a house down. And I agree. Can't be repaired, or Roger says that home is beyond repair. Thank you, Roger. But when Roger says to me anything can be repaired, it just costs a fortune. I think the appropriate remedy would be first providing that you post fifty, hundred, one hundred twenty-five, two hundred thousand dollars with the city cash money, and uh, once you do it, I think it's very little worse. That's all. And I apologize. I know it's really not my position to comment on it, but. The
just going to leave you with your, oh, okay. your, your time. Okay. Mr. Keaton? Yes. A lot of good stuff going on. Restaurants, grocery stores. Uh, looking forward to that. Looking forward to Memorial Weekend, even though it gets a little crowded around my house. I like it. <laughs> yeah, I bet so. Uh, I just want to say something. Got this in the mail. Very official looking. Uh, property 577 Annabelle City Hazel Park. It's about sewers, sewer responsibility, formal looking forms. This is not from the city. This is not from the sewer department. This is not from the county. It's from an insurance company that wants to sell you sewer insurance. So uh, give it a, a good look and make sure you, you know what it is before you send your check in. And thank everybody for coming out and participating in the democratic <coughs> process. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Lucero. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I want to wish my daughter, Kara, a happy birthday. It's today. I, uh, she's a new graduate from Wayne State as well with a bachelor's in nutrition and food science. So kind of cool, too, that ties in with these exciting new businesses coming to Hazel Park, you know, the restaurants, Great Lakes Burgers, Mabel Gray's, and Sellerman's. So, um, this is Kara. You're not supposed to tell a young lady women's age, so she's starting her second quarter century. <laughs> Congratulations! Awesome. Good. Uh, and so I just want to thank everybody for coming out. We do think about these, take these demos of the homes very seriously. Um, so it's not it's not easy when we come to certain decisions, but often the right decision is the hardest decision to make. So have a great night. Enjoy the weather. Don't walk in the street and watch out for the bicyclists. Thanks. Thank you, Mayor. I uh, hope everybody comes out this Memorial Day and have a good time. Uh, do we don't we don't take these tearing houses down lightly. We uh, go through the whole case, case by case, house by house, and we've done our due diligence many times up here as a board and looked at these show cause hearings over and over and over. And we've actually saved a few homes that were reasonably able to save. And I think that we try to look at and get a recommendation from our builder, our, our, our inspector, to tell us, hey, this, this house is a safe enough structure to move forward with because the structure of the home is <coughs> sound. And there's been a few that we've let some contractors come through and actually buy the home, and they did post a bond, and they've completed it properly and because the house was a little better shape than this one and they were you know and some were right about the same condition but th there's a lot of other issues in this one the, the structure of the roof line the structure of the wall and maybe some foundation su structures of problems as well but besides that I think we do a very good job at trying to make a, a, a tough situation and, and take it and make a good decision uh, with that being said, there's a lot of good things coming in town. We also have a possibility of uh, 585,000 square feet of light industrial. We're just still waiting on some word from the uh, state of Michigan. And that will be hopefully some really good jobs, decent paying jobs for our residents and others around us. And uh, I think that's going to be a good perk for the community as well. Thank you. Have a good night. This isn't the time. Tom, Mr. Selma. Thank you, Mayor Preecy. Uh, first of all, I want to, with all due respect to uh, our city attorney, Arnold Schiffman, uh, your, your thoughts are well taken, but by the time a uh, property gets to the city council, it has gone through several steps and several uh, ways of looking at it and, and uh, a hearing officer's uh, recommendation along with the building departments and so forth. So we, uh, we find it a 
our duty to do that which we feel is best for the citizens and residents of Hazel Park, um, not necessarily for the person who comes in and buys and speculates property. And that's what we do, and uh, so much for that. Uh, and on the road situation, um, Ms. Klobuchar mentioned that Ferndale has a dedicated millage. So does Madison Heights. They have a voted millage for roads only. Uh, we do not have that luxury in Hazel Park, so whatever we're able to do is because we are squeezing that nickel, as Ed says, uh, until the buffalo releases its contents. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we, we do the best we can. We have an amazing group of city employees uh, from administrators on down to those who work just part-time. We are blessed, so very blessed in our town. Uh, and on Memorial Day, I hope that everyone takes time to remember the original purpose of the day, and that is to remember those who, have, who gave their all for our country and our freedoms, regardless of what war they fought in. And uh, at the same time, enjoying the holiday and, and having fellowship with one another. And, and uh, please come out and join the festivities at Green Acres Park. I will again close by saying, if you love somebody, tell them so. Mm. If you have children, please hug them and tell them that you love them. Thank you. Your turn. <laughs> well, about housing stock. It's, that's a huge thing to bring people to Hazel Park. I would like to see more houses like that. We can't be patching houses this way and this way. Um, I did not feel that um, this house was going to be a strong house and a good house for somebody. Um, and that's how I feel about that. Um, also, I've been talking to a lot of the neighborhoods and I have seen the cleanest neighborhoods that I've ever seen. I don't know what made them to do that, but there's planting and they're um, helping each other and it's a good thing to be out there at Hazel Park and um, also um, at 8 Mile Boulevard I co-chaired there and we got highlighted for the Hazel Park and um, that was kind of fun too but um, I'm looking forward to the Memorial Day to sit down have a glass of beer or wine, and um, work for, on bingo. <laughs> so that'll be oh, yeah, there yeah. the whole day. The You're whole looking week. forward to that? Yeah, <laughs> I do get bored with that, <laughs> but that's what it is. So we're, we, we work all the weekend, basically. Yeah. So and, uh, they use us, but that's okay. We volunteer our time. Yes, so everyone have a great uh, day. And um, want to adjourn? Madam Mayor. Yes. Um, before we adjourn, uh, I would like to ask the council uh, if they would be amenable to asking the administration to set up a study session to review our policies, procedures, and protocol as they relate to home demolition and uh, dealing with the uh, show cause hearings. That's a good idea. In motion? So moved. I'll second that. Support? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'd also like to ask one more thing. I'd like to maybe uh, look at setting up some more bids on some roads like West End from like Meyer. Yeah, I know there's some bids going. I didn't know how soon they were coming in. That would be 
I know we don't have much money. We, we do what we can. I just look at the product. There is no way to do it. I guess what I'm asking is how much is it going to cost from like Jarvis to as Nine Mile? As, as soon as we know and we get that information, I'll share it with you. We've already approved cousins. That's going to go. Yeah. Before we do West End, that will come to you guys to make a decision about how expensive the repairs are going right. to be. That's, that's all I was asking. Yep, what, do we think we have that next month? As as we Maybe. Have, I would right. say June at, you know. The earliest? We should have them by June. Okay. Okay. We, hopefully we'll get a bid from people who are doing the work over in Ferndale, mm -hmm. uh, and that will reduce our costs. We're going to uh, close down. Uh, we're going to do that equipment here, and maybe we'll do it. Mayor? Yes. Uh, mo motion to go to exec session? Yeah, well, or do you I want to wait till later? Motion to adjourn. Support. Carry. Okay. 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 Okay.